Yo, what is up you guys, it's Grim here, and welcome back to Day 5 of the Redstone Academy. Last episode, we went over comparators. Comparators are quite possibly the most useful, though confusing, redstone devices to learn. I would highly recommend learning these before progressing in the series. Definitely go check that out in the link below if you're interested in that. In this episode, we will be getting into observers and how they work. We will also just touch on pistons, though pistons are relatively easy to understand. Just a friendly reminder, the link to each world is in the description of the respective video, meaning that day one will be in day one, day two, and day two, and so on. One last thing, this series is also based upon the better condition of Minecraft, and the results may vary between versions, however the concepts are the same. With all that being said, let's get right into it. Alright you guys, so as you can see in front of me, we have another new segment full of observers and pistons. So without further ado, let's just hop right into it. So starting off with the observers. Observer. An observer is a block that emits a redstone signal when an object is placed in front of the face side. It will always emit a one tick pulse. Blocks, liquid, and any other updates that appear in front of its face will cause it to update. The observer also sends a pulse when moved by a piston. So right here, when you press a button, actually, let's go back to the beginning. All right, so I'm actually going to go ahead and modify this circuit a little bit. If you were to go like this, and if you press the button, the redstone lamp is going to stay on for this amount of time. Now, this is not the same for observers. See, the observers will detect block updates, meaning that when I press a button, it will send out a one take pulse. And then when the button actually comes off, it will send out another one take pulse. So you get something like this. Now this can be useful in a couple scenarios, but we will get to that later on. So just a couple more examples. As you can see here, even if you go like this, it will always send out just a one tick pulse every time a block updates in front of it, whether it's a repeater, when it turns on and off, a piece of redstone, when it turns on, it will send an update. And when it turns off, it will send an update. Even if you go ahead and use a lever, when you flick it on, it'll send an update of one pulse. And when you turn it off, you'll flick it, send an update of one pulse. So basically this block cannot get powered, hard powered, and it will always send out one tick pulses no matter what all right so in this section observers will take updates from other blocks as well this is not limited to however just this little segment of blocks right here it is definitely a lot bigger you can actually go look those up yourselves it's actually quite interesting some of the blocks that observers can take an output from however right here we have a lecture now i'm going to stand at an angle to where when i open the book you can see uh right here and you can also see the lamp and you'll see when i turn the page it'll send an output and when i go back it'll send an output so basically it's reading that you are interacting with this and what that's it's basically observing you could say that it is observing so when you flick a page is going to update and observe that you updated the block in front of it meaning that it's going to send off a one tick pulse the same thing can be said with a piston when you actually press a piston upwards sideways anywhere in front of the observer it will actually go and send off a one tick pulse when it extends and retracts same thing with liquids water lava anything if it appears in front it will go ahead and send off a one tick pulse and when it disappears it'll send off a one tick pulse and then one last thing that you can do with these that it's actually really cool is actually face them all into each other so as you can see right here this observer is currently looking into this observer and if we break down you'll see that the face is actually up here on the top so it's observing this observer and then if we look at this the face is in the other direction so the observer is observing this observer which this observer is observing this observer all right i realize that this is probably really confusing let's go ahead and break down a little bit simpler all right so i have broken all the observers and we are going to start off by placing one right here so as you can see the face is looking in this direction now what we want to happen is when this piston extends it is going to observe the observer observer in front of it but we also want this observer to observe the observer above it so what are we going to do we are going to simply go ahead and build down a little bit and we're going to place one right here to where this observer when pushed will observe this observer and why that's important is when you go like this and place another observer in as you can see we are getting closer to a full circle and when we go in a full circle the observers will continuously observe each other updating so as you can see right here when I press a button I'll go ahead and make a circle. That's confusing. Trust me, I will explain it a little bit thoroughly right here in this next section. And before we get into this next section, I... Now, before we actually get into this next section, I know I'm staying a lot on this, but the sooner that you understand how this redstone contraption specifically works, the better off you will be on observers. All right, next up. Can, they can be moved by pistons. So as you can see right here, they can be used to make a one tick pulse. If you just extend it, it will go ahead and send off a one tick pulse. And when it comes back, if there's not a powered block right here, it will not power this again, meaning that you just get one tick and no others. You can also make a clock. So if you go like this, uh, this is why it's a little bit simpler in this one. Two observer faces facing into each other will constantly observe each other, meaning that they will continuously send off an output, uh, making a clock that you can make uh, beautiful fireworks with, I guess. So a little bit more specific here. Observer, this 
this observer will observe this observer, all right? But since this observer is observing this observer going into this observer, <laughs> I can't do this. Okay, but anyway, since this observer is observing this observer, they will continuously just observe each other, meaning that they will continuously send out redstone outputs because when this one sends out a redstone output, this will detect that, and then that will send out a redstone output, and then when this detects that one sending out a redstone output, this one will send out a redstone output, and it just continues on like that. All right, next up, observers are not opaque blocks. They're actually transparent. As you can see right here, it just goes right through the guy and goes ahead and powers the lamp right here. Same thing right here. I went ahead and condensed it down using two repeaters. So this could hypothetically be a hard power block and the repeater will always take an output from a block if it is soft powered or hard powered. So if I flick this on, you'll see a repeater is not taking an output, meaning that this is not hard powered or soft powered, meaning that it is a transparent block. All right. So since observers detect only block updates, here is a challenge. Now, just a word of heads up. The best way to learn observers is to experiment. Unlike for other redstone components, observers are quite simple once you gain the grasp with them. So honestly, just experiment with these. That's all that I can really suggest. I know that it is very confusing, but you just have to get under the concept that these things only give out one tick pulses. They cannot sustain anything and anything that observ is observed in front of its face will give off a single pulse. And that is just something that you need to figure out whether it's air, a transparent block, uh, a button, a door, anything that moves in front of its face will send off an update. All right, and with that, I give you a challenge. Make a circuit that makes a dispenser dispense and retract water with one push of the button. So as you can see right here, I will go ahead and press it and it dispenses and retracts. Now this should be pretty simple as you saw down there with the redstone. I'm, I'm not gonna go ahead and give any hints. Uh, you can rewind if you want. However, this is what you need to make. Go ahead and pause the video and try and make this and I'll see you in a second. All right, so this is very simple to make. If you just go ahead and break down here, you will see, actually, I don't, I wanna be careful so I don't break anything. Uh, so if I break down here, you'll see what I have done here is took a redstone output from this button and then used the transparent observer block to go ahead and go down. However, the observer block will then observe this redstone powering, which will then power this dispenser. However, when the redstone turns off, the observer will go ahead and detect the redstone turning off, which will send another little pulse to the dispenser right here, causing it to suck the water back up. All right, next up, I just have two useful circuits for observers. We did cover them over there, but I will just go ahead and go in a little bit more detail here if I, if even possible. All right, so the observer clock, as you saw over there, I explained it pretty well, but let's just go over it again. If you want a short little burst, or if you want to use a lever or a T flip flop to go ahead and lock it on, uh, observer clocks are very useful in compact builds. Actually, these are my most used clock, actually, for any uh, longtime viewers of my channel. These are my favorite go-to redstone clock. And it's very simple. It's just using a piston to push them together. And like I said before, the observer faces will continuously observe each other, continuously spitting off redstone outputs, continuously powering this dispenser over and over again. And then the next one is going to be a single tick circuit, also known as a monostable circuit, which is basically just a, a pulse shortener. All right, I forgot my button, but as you can see right here, when I go ahead and push the observer into this block, it will go ahead and send an output to that block. However, when it's retracted, it is not gonna be able to actually go ahead and power that block. As you can see right there, when it comes out, it just gets a little brighter at the end right there. Uh, I'm gonna try and show it one more time. A, a little spritz of redstone you could say and it's not going to be able to power this because there's a block of air in the way and even if it was powering this block uh then this block would only be activated meaning that it would not leach into this block now if you do want to make something like this make sure that you do not do this or else you will end up with like an extra tick at the end of your first tick meaning it will go ahead and shoot one here however when it's retracted it will power this block powering this again which is just negating the whole thing of this why why wouldn't you just go like this at that point you know what i mean so basically make sure that you do it right and understand what you're getting yourself into like i said experiment 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 that's the only way to really learn what observers do if you are not grasping from what i am saying now up next i'm going to do a short little rundown on pistons but the reason i'm not doing a whole video on them is because uh, they're, they're relatively simple to understand and there's not much to go over until we get to the actual circuit series and I do not want to introduce you to a bunch of circuits before the circuit series because that's kind of, you know, that defeats the point. So I'm just going to go over the basics of it, show you how to make a door and then introduce you to what that thing does. All right. So right here, 
a quick piston rundown. Pistons can move any blocks as long as there is not more than 12 blocks in front of it. Sticky pistons will retract the most near block to it. Under no circumstances can a piston move an immovable object. All right, so right here we have 12 blocks as indicated by the white wall at the top, and then there's 11 blocks in between. So if I go ahead and press this button, it'll go and push it up. Now, as you can see here, it is now the same height as this one with the black block, which is indicating number 13. So if I go and press the button, it's not going to move because this is 13 blocks. This is 12 blocks. Same thing right here with the sticky piston. If I go ahead and press it up, it will move the 12 blocks. However, it is going to retract the bottom one. As seen right here, 13 blocks, it is not going to move at all. And right here, a little demonstration, a piston trying to move a piece of obsidian, which is an immovable object, not able to be moved, and a sticky piston trying to move a, an immovable object by retracting it towards it, and that is not going to happen either. All right, now I have a little challenge. You can use all of your knowledge from all of these to make a simple little piston door. That is the challenge here. So as you can see, I'm just going to step on these pressure plates. It's going to open up and then I can walk on through and then I can walk through in both directions. Now, believe me when I say this is a ridiculously simple circuit. Try not to overthink it and just try to think as simply as possible. You actually don't need to use that many redstone components at all. So with that being said, go ahead and pause the video and I will see you in a second. All right, so let's go ahead and bust down into this piston door. As you can see, it opened up, but let's go ahead and get rid of these blocks so I can step off the pressure plates, break these, and break down. And as you can see here, it is just as simple as this. It is mirrored on both sides, so what it is is a redstone line coming up, powering this torch, which is then going to power both pistons because of the powered block on top of it, and that is going to be deactivated when you actually go ahead and give it some kind of power. As you can see right here, it is going to deactivate it and pull them in. And if you step off, it is going to repower it and push them out. If you would like to get a closer look at this, as always, the link to the world is in the description below. All right, and this is just a little book a tip right here. It is crucial to understand the basic piston mechanics. They are used in a wide variety of large circuits, which, like I said before, just is a basic general rundown of why I'm not using it or else I would literally put every single circuit possible in, in this video. So right here we have one last thing. Do not get too wrapped around this. However, here is a flying machine. I figured this suited this video specifically because it went over pistons as well as observers, which are literally the two things that you use to make a flying machine plus some slime blocks, honey blocks. But if you get really complicated, you don't even need slime and honey blocks. And that, that's a little bit crazy to me. But anyway, honey and slime blocks can be used to move objects like a sticky piston. They will move all blocks touching it and honey and slime blocks do not stick together. So here's a little example. As you can see right here, I push the honey block and I'll go ahead and push this quartz block, but it will not move the, the slime block. Same thing with the slime block, it does the exact same thing. All right, I went ahead and modified it here. So if I press them, you'll see that all these get moved, but then if it gets stuck on a block, it will not actually retract. So you need to be careful when you are mingling these together or else something like this could happen. And then one last thing, what I'm going to do is place a block right here. So as you can see, it will push all these blocks up However, that corner block will not actually get retracted, which is, you know, it could be problematic, but like I said, it's a lot of experimenting, a lot of learning, specifically with pistons and observers. Well, at all the redstone components in general, but specifically these, these right here, these two components are my favorite ones and comparators, and they take a lot of learning. And, you know, when you actually get down to it, they're, they're quite simple once you understand them. All right, and lastly, we have the flying machine. So if I go ahead and update underneath, as you can see, this observer is facing down here. So if I shoot an update to it, it will power this piston, pushing this chunk upwards, right? So what will then happen is this observer is going to detect that update, powering the piston, which is then going to grab this and suck it upwards, which is then going to cause this observer right here, you know, to detect the update, powering the piston, pushing it up, this observer detects, pulls it up and then pushes and so on. So if you press the button, you'll see it will fly straight upwards. So exactly like I said, it will detect and sort of do a little bit of a clock thing. So that these are, don't get your head wrapped too much around these. Uh, they're really quite simple. However, they are the most confusing thing in my opinion when you get to really large scale contraptions like walking robots and houses and anything like that. 
all right you guys and i hope that you enjoyed that video now i will get this out right now before you leave the video the next redstone academy video is going to be test day testing you on a bunch of basic simple circuits that you can make using all of your knowledge it's not going to use any complicated stuff no t flip flops it's not going to use uh really complicated pulse extenders or anything like that it is only going to use the circuits that I actually taught you and it is going to teach you how to make like flush piston doors uh simple little flying machines automatic ender pearl dispensers that will dispense exactly 16 which is you know I mean that can be kind of useful or just a bunch of little things that will help expand your knowledge so if you are interested in that make sure that you study do not just watch that video to watch that video watch that video when you actually think that you are ready to take the test because once the answers are spoiled that's it but with all that being said uh i hope that you guys did enjoy this video as always i do put a lot of work into the redstone academy videos to hopefully uh, help the people that you know were like me a while ago and i am rambling on way too long so if you are interested in discord that is in the link below as usual patreon i appreciate every single person that joins and with all that being said if you liked the video go ahead and leave a like and if you loved it maybe subscribe and check out the rest of my content but with all that being said i've been grim and i will see you in the next one peace out Thank you.